so hello everyone today we are going to discuss about superscalar and vector processors so usually in risk or cisc scalar processor uh, it can be improved with superscalar or vector architecture so already we, in the previous videos we have discussed about risk and uh, cisc machines and what are their uh, differences now we will discuss superscalar and vector processors so scalar processor is nothing but which executes one instruction per cycle so that was called as scalar processors but in super scalar processor multiple instructions are issued per cycle and multiple results are generated per cycle that's why it is called as super scalar compared to the scalar in scalar we are executing only one instruction but in super scalar we are executing multiple instructions and we are also getting multiple results that is called as a super scalar processor and in a vector processor which executes vector instructions on arrays of data means here we are giving multiples means array is nothing but a um, uh, so not a single dimension it is multi dimensional data uh, so that is uh, executed by vector instructions and if you come to the super scalar processors so usually we have instruction execution each instruction has four phases that is instruction fetch a decode execute write back so these four phases uh, includes uh, instruction executions okay so for example in this diagram if you see here a super scalar processor of degree m is equal to 3 means we are at clock cycle 0 if you observe we are at clock cycle 0 so this is your first instruction this is your second and this is your third okay so at clock cycle 0 if you observe this is your clock cycle 0 so we are executing three instructions so these are three instructions okay so this is one this is two and three and at clock cycle one if you see here this is your clock cycle one we are starting here that is the fourth instruction okay and again we are issuing three instructions at a time that's why it is super scalar in scalar we are executing one instruction per cycle but in super scalar we are executing multiple instruction here degree is equal to m is equal to 3 means here and at clock cycle 2 we observe here we are issuing next three instructions at clock cycle 3 so this goes on this is called as pipelining technique so we are executing more than one instruction at a time so this technique is called as pipelining to reduce the execution time so we are using pipelining technique so this is a, a diagram of typical super scalar risk processor and it consists of integer unit and a floating point unit and if you observe here uh, we have a instruction memory then instruction cache then we have a decoder and there are two blocks one is integer unit and one more is floating point unit so after instruction is taken to instruction cache it is decoded and according suppose if it is an a floating point instruction then it is given to floating point unit otherwise it is given to the integer unit here again if the instruction is a branch again it is given to here branch rs is nothing but reservation stations so you learn about all these reservation stations afterwards uh, so branch and if it is an arithmetic uh, instruction it is given to alu so depending on type of instruction uh, we have different hardware units here and similarly in floating point also we have different types of hardware units like float add float convert float multiply divide load store and similarly we have register file and if instruction needs data so data is taken from this data memory and from data cache to the instruction so usually they will ask for 7 to 10 marks so you have to write this super scalar processor okay so first we discussed about super scalar is nothing but a 
processor which execute multiple instructions uh, per cycle and multiple results are generated but normally scalar processor execute one instruction so if you're normal so it is a super scalar and so here he, this diagram you have to write so usually we are issuing uh, three instructions at a time so one instruction consists of four phases that is fetch decode execute write back so once we execute these four phases then only you can say that one instruction is executed then second is started third is started so all are started clock zero and at clock cycle one we are starting the fourth instruction so usually in scalar processor what we will do here uh, in clock cycle one second instruction will start but here since it is a super scalar it has a capacity to execute more than one instructions then this diagram we have to write so you can easily fetch uh, 8 to 10 marks okay thank you